Thank you, thank you. Uh, the long-awaited discussion is here, uh, and we have the daunting task of uh, looking into the future of advertising in just 30 minutes. So taking the an analogy of Matrix, I will be the Neo that is going to these three oracles right here. Uh, three sides, actually, uh, a very competent panel of, uh, uh, of a discussion, because uh, representing the media side, uh, there's a representing the agency side and representing the client side. So uh, uh, let's jump right in here, and uh, I would like to give each gentleman right now just three minutes uh, to uh, describe the landscape of advertising right now and wh maybe where we would like to go. Uh, in three minutes, uh, go, let's go right ahead. Constantine, the floor is yours. I would like to give microphone to a uh, person who pay for all advertising here. No. <laughs> okay, so the microphone goes What's to that? the That's a side. setup. That's a setup. <laughs> um, well, the, the future of advertising in three minutes and the current situation the current as well? situation. Current situation, <laughs> okay. I, both. Okay, nice. No pressure. <laughs> um, I, th I think it's getting more and more about data anyway. Like, I think we, what, we, what we see is we use more and more data. I mean, in digital, like, that's clear. Um, I think that uh, data in TV is coming really, really soon. At least La Telecom is working on it. And already next year, we're going to see uh, some, some absolutely new tools that will measure the exact data, not just panels. So, um, and, and, and of course, it's going to be about uh, whoever can drive value out of, out of the data. So, the data itself is, is, is worth a lot. I mean, that's a new oil, but, uh, but how can you drive value out of it? That's the key. So, data-driven. Uh, next, Constantine, please. Okay, so at least I know what I have to prepare for next year. But uh, if you're talking about media landscape here, then the uh, funny thing that our economic is growing up, but if you're talking about advertising market, then uh, in the first six months it dropped almost in all areas. And uh, this is a, pl a moment when media has to think, where is our future? Uh, because we understand, at least Delphi understand in Latvia, that uh, the model, what was previously that uh, clients have been paying to medias for uh, giving their message to mass, it's not. Uh, it started to to change because actually clients could be medias itself, and if talking about light like on, they have everything and and etc. Uh, there is also LMT and they also media and we talked with them a couple years ago that each big client could be media right now and that's it means for us that we have to think about alternative ways how we could support quality of journalism and today we mentioned uh, about payroll and this will be one of the things but it doesn't mean that okay for example at 28 of March all media, so at least Delphi, will switch off advertising model and switch on paywall. No, it will be like transaction. And I think that it will take at least five years. Because Delphi Estonia has a good example of success in paywall, but this is uh, a road that they did during five years already. Okay. Maris, please. Yeah, so since I'm middle, uh, I'm going to say that the most important probably now is balance. And it's quite interesting because it's a balance between the data and uh, maybe the brand itself. Because you know, because so far we we experienced in advertising that everybody was about the brand for a while, and every, ev everybody was about the performance. So and now everybody understands that the truth is somewhere in the middle. And uh, again, also about the structure, um, how advertising is sold and bought. Also, it's about the balance. So nowadays, it's a huge difference how it used to be when uh, agencies, for example, help with an idea and uh, with the creative. Now, it's mix and match hybrid models. So, um, and it's happening, it's gonna happen in Latvia as well now soon, probably next year gonna be the big change because uh, sometimes advertisers are buying something directly. Sometimes advertisers are um, just uh, using their own channels as well. And uh, agencies now are kind of pressured to change uh, sometimes agencies are like uh, uh, just a middleman, but uh, it's just a couple cases now. But in general, agencies are helping helping like sense makers, so that uh, you can help with the technologies, explain client uh, wh which kind of technology you use and how to use. And again, the balance between the technology and the know-how, because uh, probably everybody in the room who is in digital marketing uh, so far have heard about the programmatic buying, for example. 
and uh, media in uh, Baltics and Latvia in particular were kind of very cautious about the programmatic buying so far. And again, also Constantine knows Delphi themselves uh, also were pushing back a bit a while ago. So, but now this next year going to be again about the balance, how much you can buy uh, through the technology, how much you make some direct deals and so on. So it's all about the balance. So in the, uh, continuing this topic, uh, maybe a little pro proactive question. Will uh, clients and agencies need media in the future? Because as Constantine drew up the picture a little bit, uh, La Telecom itself is becoming a, a brand, a, a channel. So will media, is, is, there, is there a place for media in the advertising space in the future? Maybe let's continue with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean just define media. Uh, it's a hybrid, right? <laughs> it's, I mean, uh, if we just... Uh, Brands themselves are media now, uh, and uh, you know, influencers, they are media now. And uh, so it means that uh, I would say it's quite opposite. I would be more, uh, more questioning the usage of agencies, actually, because uh, nowadays clients can buy something direct directly from media, and uh, media can sell themselves directly as well. So uh, I would say the answer is definitely uh, media uh, going to be there in the game. But it's just a question of definition. What is media? So, just uh, another question for you: what do, what do agencies have to transform into to survive? As you said, maybe it's media who is uh, out in this. You field. know, it's quite quite a buzzword at the moment. But the agencies are becoming consultants. But the problem is uh, with the small markets like uh, like ours that uh, to become consultant, actually, you have to invest a lot because you don't have such a luxury to, uh, to, to, to learn on the big advertisers just to you know, go, go step by step. Technically, you just have to invest a lot in, in your resources so that you are being able to help with something to, uh, for, uh, to advertiser. So agencies should be like consultants, as I told previously, sense makers, so that client can ask anything. And actually, media also can be client of the agency. Just ask anything about the technology, about the approach, and agency should be able to help. And I'm not talking just about pitch decks, because every all agencies are making nice pitch decks. You, if you just look through, you're going to see, wow, everybody's so smart. But it's about the real job, uh, how you can do, uh, do that. So that's probably going to be the agency also for the next five years. It's sense maker and helper with all the new stuff that's coming in the market. Uh, you're just from your point of view. How does this trio work in the future? Is there a role for agency for uh, for the media? Uh, yeah, Maris sits in the middle, and uh, and he 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 used the word middleman, and he used also that uh, he already speaks from his own point of view about that they the, uh, the agencies are the ones that need to find that value, what what they're gonna bring to to um, media and to clients, because I can talk to Constantine's directly. You know, that's no problem to me, and I I see it's no problem to Constantine's as well. And obviously, we are working on projects that even go beyond advertising. I mean, they are the projects that will drive value. That's why also what's changing in uh, on a, on a, maybe on a smaller scale for the future of advertising. If we speak, if we speak, so let's say if we speak about the future of sponsorship, we see that traditional sponsorship in such a small market as ours is is basically declining very very sharply at the moment. And where it's going to go? It's going to go that we're going to create projects that are actually meaning something and this is going to be a challenge for the agency because they're going to be in like okay where do i add my value to it and i mean we're ready to open we're open to work and see who, what drives the value but as i said if data doesn't show that value it's going to be hard to to cooperate in that in that way so uh, let the microphone stay with you because the next question may be looking at uh, three, five-year perspective. Let's talk about mar marketing channels. Uh, what do you see? What will, what will change? Will any channels die out, uh, maybe rise up for you? Uh, how do you see that? Um, I mean, I, I don't think any of the channels are going to die out. I, I, I don't think that's happening. Obviously, we see the change all the time. We see that, we see that the global, global players are taking significant shares and, and, and I think the challenge for us is, is also locally to, to drive uh, one, one thing is, is, uh, is tax money, which is not coming from the international media. And we as a, as a government-owned uh, company are very proud uh, of the taxes that we pay uh, to, to, to our country. And that is one challenge, which I think is where we all three can work together. And, and it doesn't even mean like, wh who cares about the channel? I mean, the, 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 the message needs to reach 
the right audience, right? And make some value to it, like be valuable. And, and that's going to be the key. And it doesn't matter if it's going to be an Instagram influencer or it's going to be a traditional TV ad or an outdoor poster or even a newspaper, which seems to sell, sort, of, sort of decline uh, a lot. It's still going to, if, if there's going to be people who want to touch that paper, they want to read something and they're going to find a meaningful ad there and that, that will create something, it's going to stay, it's going to work. Maybe smaller than now, but... Mars, from your point of view, uh, yep. are there any channels that maybe uh, you're, you drive more your clients towards? To yeah, if you're just looking for some practical answers, you know, <laughs> just uh, but uh, to add to the previous question a bit more about uh, uh, who is going to stay in the game. So it's quite interesting that, like again, this programmatic buying because, because it's buzzy. I'm just going to explain a bit more because in the United States, for example, at the moment, like one fifth of all advertisers, big ones, are technically taking in-house a lot of stuff, uh, doing ads online. So it's you know, different sources, different numbers, but around like 20%. And maybe around 60% just, they just answering that they're going to use agency as a consultant. So uh, nowadays, so there are channels and the digital channels that technically can be brought in-house for the advertisers. And it's happening already now in Latvia as well with the Google uh, paid search. It's happening with the um, paid social um, and, and with the Facebook, for example. So when I'm being asked quite often, so guys, what are you going to do? You're going to go out of the business. Uh, but uh, uh, I'd say no, because uh, what we do, we just uh, try to help, and we do understand that clients can go in-house. We just help with the consultancy, we just set them up, we just help them with everything so that they can go uh, um, beyond this level when they need agency. But answering to your question about the channels for the next year, probably, I'd say, I would guess that um, two micro channels probably gonna, uh, gonna, gonna be more pop popular. It's gonna be influencers, of course, it's super buzzy now. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's a small money yet, so, but in, in, anyways, everybody gonna talk about it, gonna use something. Uh, not sure about efficiency though. But uh, second one gonna be probably digital out of home. Because uh, uh, so far we are kind of behind, and uh, it's again dif different question because of the adoption of format is quite expensive. But in general, uh, we see that also providers are growing, and uh, the inventory going to be available. So digital out of home should be big next year, I, I suppose. So. Okay. Uh, Constantine, how about you? We see Delphi evolving all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Delphi TV, uh, a new new perspective of, of 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 the whole franchise. How do you see the channels evolving? Because we see you evolving every year. Uh, actually, I would like to say that uh, clients could be peace and calm because actually you don't care if after a couple of years there will not be Delphi and it will be only Google. You still will have money, and you still will have your customers. And us as a media, we 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 care. We a little bit nervous right now because we see that huge money coming to Facebook, huge money coming to Google, and if you see it's uh, it's Scandinavian market when during five years local media's are flat, but at the same time salaries of journalists and others are going up, but money that coming to uh, duopoly Facebook and Google they like triple five times more and etc. That's why for us it's very essential to understand what kind of channels will be in future more and more popular and first of all to protect ourselves uh, from uh, this duopoly. That's why from from my point of view and from Delphi management point of view that uh, next channels will be uh, first of all programmatic and uh, this is from one side is uh, of um, uh, threat for us because this money coming to Google, but Google have to put this money somewhere. Because when you put money on Google, you ask, please, I want to put this money near Latvian content. And after that, Google came to Delphi, and after that, we see that they want to put this uh, your money in, 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 in Delphi content. There's a problem, what I see, that right now, when you're paying, for example, 5 euro CPM, we, for all these technical intermediaries, are getting cents. So, f in, first of all, what we see that media, local media, will use more and more programmatic stuff, but one other thing, there are too many technical intermediaries. And in, in small countries, we see that, like, different kinds of initiatives, then there is one provider of cookies, one provider of uh, this programmatic stuff, and actually the gap between what medias get and what uh, clients are paying beca becomes smaller, smaller, and smaller. This one little thing. Uh, another thing, of course, digital out of house, because if you see that right now in Tallinn, there is like 30 screens in regulate a couple times more. We just have only uh, like Delphi 9 and our competitors have 9, and that's it. 
And uh, one of the things that uh, old stuff, what could be digitalized and outdoor, this is the next big one thing that could be digitalized. It helped uh, both of you to make campaigns digital on online and simultaneously on, 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 on streets and to decrease cost of these campaigns. And the third one thing that Ingus uh, told that we can't compete with Facebook and Google for just banners. We have to adapt their, their, their uh, opportunities of programmatic. But what we can do, we could uh, talk with clients, with agencies about native projects, about content projects, and this part is growing uh, very fast in our income, and, and this is our future. Um, so, Maris, from your side, uh, point of view, so Delphi is offering digital screens, uh, native uh, advertising. How do you evaluate these new ads? Of course, you mentioned program for programmatic them. ads. Uh, is that the future, and will, uh, will that help uh, keep the money locally without sending it uh, all the way over the Atlantic? You know, if, if, if we would sit now in some bigger market, whatever, like France, Germany, or any other U European country, for example, I would say yes, definitely. At the moment, the biggest problem is with adopt, adopt, adopting the formats. Because, uh, I mean, even now, you can um, access a lot of channels with different formats. Uh, for our local campaigns, it's uh, simply, you know, this ratio between the producing the format and then using it. So. Definitely, in a shorter period, it's going to be a challenge. In a longer period, we're going to do that. But uh, I just wanted to add that um, uh, to Constantine's uh, regarding the changes also with the display advertising. Probably uh, uh, not too many people know that this was the first half year. I don't know, probably in 10 years. First half year when the display advertising, direct advertising buying from the portals was decreasing. I don't know, maybe for Delphi it was uh, around zero or something like that. But in general, it was minus 5% on display advertising on banners on, uh, on portals in Latvia. So changes are coming, of course, more money coming through uh, programmatic and so on. So yeah, format's going to change. Native, not sure about that yet. But um, we just have to balance, again, the expenses producing those formats and data we can measure that we can back um, some value back. Um. One comment that actually, if talking about this decrease, even Delphi uh, noticed that there is decrease of just classical display banners. And uh, this year will be the first year when actually the biggest part of our revenue will not come from classical banners. We right now have like six different advertising products. And I think that in future it will be more and more. So this is model when you can just live with display banners was actually started to die almost three years ago. And I think it will, it will not die, but in future, it will be more than, no more than one third part of any media. Mm -hmm. uh, Jurgis, from your point of view, you, talk, you talked about data. Uh, does data now show that any of these uh, so-called new marketing tools, programmatic ads, uh, screens, etc., cetera, uh, are there any like changes in the business side or, or do you stick to classic values? No, for sure there are changes. Uh, like for example, the digital screens, like we would like to do it that we can do with one push of button, we can change whichever screen in Riga we want, and we have the campaigns that we want. We want to sell electricity now, okay. It's a good price on, on, uh, on electricity, stock exchange. Good, we, we sell electricity now. Uh, there is some other thing, like a new movie came out, Bang, we, we sell short. Are you talking like right about away. a bidding model like in Facebook where it you could bid be for bidding. Actually, space? we're speaking about digital screens. And, uh, like in London, for example, also paper out of home is programmatic. Like you buy programmatic. And what we, do, what we are going to deliver next year already, you will, you will have uh, the first catch up or archive as we call it in Latvia. The, the catch up uh, content on TV is going to be uh, sold program by program programmatic already. And already it was going to be segmented, targeted to not, a, not an individual, but it's going to be a micro-segmentation. So it's coming really, really fast. It seems like five years in front, but already next year it's, 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 it's going to be there. So like the time when we're going to be buying uh, out of home in Riga or in Latvia in general, programmatically, is maybe a little further away, but it's coming. Like I mean, those models are already out there uh, in the world. So. Since like I'm add-on, you know, just passing microphone all the time, I can add some comment. But uh, so uh, uh, also some other uh, uh, variables are in the game. 
uh, we just have to take into account that we can um, discuss whatever we want about the future of advertising um, because uh, a lot of behavior can change that. For example, um, uh, at the moment there are some new initiatives like, I don't know if it's allowed in conference to mention the word blockchain in this one, you know, it's a shame probably now, but um, if you look at the blockchain in advertising, uh, there is, uh, for example, one browser called Brave. And this is a browser based on the idea that uh, uh, you can s uh, put in the money, I don't know, whatever, like $10. And uh, then you can uh, allow to split this money between the media that you're going to look in this browser. For example, if I look 60% Delphi, 40% other sites, doesn't matter. So I can split my money between them. So technically, I will not see advertising. I will pay for the content. So that's one example. And there are other examples, like it's coming soon in Latvia. For example, we heard that Delphi could probably going to be their paywall. So they're not going to be advertising. Uh, we know that uh, a lot of uh, video formats and platforms are also under subscri subscription now. So they're not going to be advertising. So a lot of, a lot of stuff that's influencing. Uh, and so we don't know what's going to happen in Latvia soon, probably next year as well. Um, time is slowly but surely running out and we want to expand this discussion in more topics. So what we are going to do in the next few minutes, so let's play a game with you. I call it uh, Blitzkrieg Round of Questions. Uh, the, uh, the challenge is, is, is simple and the answers you give is yes or no and maybe one or two questions if you want to support your answer. It w I will have 10 statements about advertising, uh, different, different sections, and uh, just pass the microphone around like you did previously, yes or no, and one or two uh, questions, uh, uh, sentences to, uh, to explain your answer. So first of all, uh, shortcut Netflix and other streaming services will make television commercials ineffective in the future, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Because people don't want to uh, watch advertising on TV. Okay. No, and you can call me for longer answer. Because Netflix is already, they are testing advertising as well as they see that the money from subscription is not enough. Okay. But you can call me later on. No, they're not speaking about live events. They're not speaking about, uh, they're not showing whatever is current at the moment. There is zero sports there, so advertising will stay. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I can guess the answer for, for the next question from your side, but Printed press is a dying advertising channel. Declining. <laughs> Declining, okay. Sorry, but yes. Uh, definitely yes. Sorry, Hans. Okay. Uh, advertising has to be mobile first. Yes, of course. Uh, already we have more mobile uh, monthly users than desktop. No, because soon it's going to be mobile only for a lot of people. Content has to be mobile first, and then the advertising follows. Okay, so uh, video is the most effective type of advertising, the format, video format. Video is the most effective. Most effective. Yes or no? Time sticking. No. Okay. It depends, channel by channel. So, channel by channel, and some channels, yes, okay. and channels, it's not. Okay. I hope that no. Uh, I have no answer. <laughs> next statement. Augmented reality in the future will be as widely used as uh, social media advertisements. Definitely no. It's very hard, actually, technology. And uh, this technology is living a couple of years and still is not popular. Okay. Again, define future. So if in five years, no. If in ten years, I would say probably it could be. Okay. Five years, no. Ten years, no. 25 years, maybe. Sorry to the guys outside there with the glasses. Uh, no future for you. Um, artificial intelligence will destroy jobs in the advertising field. It will destroy and it will create. Some will need to train it. Some will need to work with it. So it's going to be like already in La Telecom today. We have uh, call, call center people that are becoming, we have already moved. Mm -hmm. Uh, over 20 people to to or maybe not 20 over 10 for sure people to uh, to do the coaching of robots so for of i uh, of ai uh, no actually it's uh, going to give more jobs in advertising agencies in marketing agencies but definitely going to decrease uh, amount of headcount at the advertiser side I wouldn't say that uh, it will kill some kind of jobs. There will be people who will left, but there will be people who come in just to work with this technology. Okay. Uh, social networks will, will be the most used channels by advertisers. 
I think no, because we have right now another uh, tendency, especially in, in USA, uh, just not to open Facebook daily, open weekly. And I think that uh, sometimes we understand that they, uh, Facebook and others uh, knows, us, uh, knows about us too much, and we have to limit it. I don't know if it's most used, but yes, in terms of money, that could be the major uh, amount of the money going to go to the social networks soon. I would say yes in terms of frequency, uh, no in terms of whether that's going to drive the most business. Okay. Uh, influencers is a short-term trend, yes or no? As high as it is it now, I would say yes. <laughs> I think it's, it, it will go up and down and it's going to depend on the influencers themselves. Okay, what does the agency think? I think it's like wrong definition of the question in the, in the core because, I mean, we have seen in influencers since, I don't know, humanity is on the earth. So it's just a definition. Somebody came up with a new fancy word. So I want to answer to this question. I mean, I don't understand it. Uh, yes, I, I agree to you that uh, right now we're talking about influences in social network. I think it's just a trend for a couple, maybe 10 years. After that, there will be some kind of other kind of influencers. Before that, it was TV influencers. So, okay. And the last one, uh, ad block and similar uh, ad blocking programs uh, will kill classic banner ads in internet portals. No, because ad blocks, uh, we have been talking about ad blocks three years ago and we still survive and we are, we are good, doing good. So no? No, it will not. Format's going to adapt. Next question. No. <laughs> Uh, we have a few minutes left, so uh, let's talk about the uh, last two questions. Uh, let's talk about ethics in, uh, in advertising. Uh, with the whole communication and advertising getting more bolder, get more like more like rough around the edges, uh, what are the borders that uh, the advertising field will uh, cross to achieve their business goals? Uh, what are the lines that will be crossed in the next five, ten years? Uh, more sex, more nudity, uh, what are the lines? Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a longer, longer answer question. Uh, well, um, I, think, uh, I think it's going to depend on the, on the society. I mean, the, the topics, I mean, we're touching with the content. We're also working on our TV channels. We're, we're constantly working on, on making the borders wider, you know, making going the next step again. We're, we're constantly talking, and I think Constantin will probably say the same thing. Uh, the content creators are, are moving those borders. So, so has to do the ad, ad, uh, ad creators. So that's, it's, it's gone in line with the society. And probably then, if you hit some point when, when it's like very few people understand it and very few, few people uh, uh, take it like normally that it's okay, then, then you're probably over the border. But I think it, it goes along. It's not only advertising. It goes along with content, with society in general. Um, yeah, I would totally agree, and just to maybe just to add uh, one example, like the last couple of years, one of the channels, you know guys, Pornhub, yeah? You have heard about it. But what is that? That's one of the channels uh, which is really active in the, between the agencies and in the digital field, they're promoting the channel for the advertising. And the slogan is quite simple, you should be where your audience is. That's it. And they have 3 billion hits or something like that per month, I don't know. So basically those borders, you know, quite of sh blurry, shady, so I don't know where the border is. So, uh, Actually, I think that I would like to see uh, that agencies, uh, creative agencies, clients, could come to these borders. Because I think that in Latvia we have one problem, that all, uh, uh, all clients, agencies, they try to make like very neutral message and to predict clicks or, or whatever else. And if everything is neutral, there is no uh, uh, war between ideas. So uh, brand A and brand B, they only compete by price. And one of the examples is uh, airports. When you're visiting to Tallinn, you see each gate has some kind of branding. And they have only nine gates. We have like 30 gates in Riga, no one branding at all. I want to see fight for ideas between clients, agencies, creative fights. And this will stimulate uh, medias too. And this also to stimulate uh, where is the borders, ethical borders uh, for, for our society. Okay, so uh, gentlemen, let's create some headlines for the journalists in the last few minutes. 
I want to hear from you. What is the next big thing in advertising? Forget the things that are, that are out here now. Let's look into the future. What is the next big thing? Uh, I would like to say there is no next big thing because during oh, five, so. because during five years I have heard each six months a new big thing is vertical video. After six months, a new big thing is instant articles, a new big thing is that VR and etc. I think that we shouldn't talk about b b big things. We should see what survived, and after that we start have to use these technologies. If you're talking about robots, then I know that you are using robots who reply. We right now are using robots who check comments, and in Sweden I know robots who write articles. So it's AI? It's not AI, because if you're talking about AI, there is no AI in this. It's like advanced algorithm of, of, of robots. Uh, my message is that there is no any big things. Uh, it's like uh, hype. If you talk about big things, then actually we are wearing watches, digital watches, not for the time, but for calculating steps. This is a big thing. Did anybody notice that? No. Uh, Mars, do you agree? There is no big thing. It's just what's here now. Uh, or I'm, is there a big I'm thing? I'm quite a practical guy, so um, I will th probably stick from the media agency side. Now I will comment uh, about the big, about tomorrow uh, in Latvia, about next year. So I would say two things going to be there. One is transparency. It's I'm happy that it's coming here, and, uh, and advertisers are demanding transparency. They want to see where the money is spent, how effective is that. Uh, so it should be here. I, I mean, I feel it. Uh, and the second one, probably stop talking, start doing, because, um, again, uh, clients are getting more educated and uh, they are asking, demanding from the agencies and from the media effective solutions. Because uh, we can, you know, buzz about everything, about the, about the influencer marketing, about the programmatic buying, about the native advertising, but uh, so far it was more talking, less doing. So and now, uh, again, seems that next year is going to be the breakthrough and the client's going to demand real action. They're going to see if the agency and the media can bring the value. I hope so. You just you have the honors to finish this. I'm disappointed this. that you guys really, yeah. The what next big it? thing you need to make the headline on an article for journalists. Okay, Latvia, the first country in the world to launch the actual working TV programmatic buying. Excellent. So done let's by have done by Tet and not La Telecom. <laughs> let's next have a year. round of applause for our great speakers. Our 30 minutes, unfortunately, is over. Thank you. You're excellent. I'm actually not disappointed to, in you guys. Thanks uh, to Jurgis from La Telecom, Maris from uh, Densu Edges, and uh, Constantine from Delphi. Thank you.